Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV, your financial coach, counsellor and creator. Now, lots of people have been emailing me, freaking out about their credit card debt and asking for help in paying it off. Um, that's fine, that's great. I'm here to help and I'm going to help you get that pet, pet? I'm going to get you help, help you get that debt paid down as soon as possible. But um, there are some people out there who are actually quite responsible with their credit cards. And I just wanted to show you um, and give you a list of the characteristics um, that indicate that you are safe to have a credit card. Okay, so the first characteristic is you have a lot of control and discipline. You always pay off your credit card in full every month when it's due. You never pay any interest or any penalties or fees. Okay. Second thing is you find that you don't spend extra because you're using plastic. Now, on Dave Ramsey's channel, which is a, a dedicated YouTube channel um, to helping um, everyday American families out with their um, managing their money, his studies have shown that if you use a credit card versus cash, you'll spend about 20 to 22% more than what you would do if you were just paying in physical you know, dollar notes, which I always like to recommend. So if you find that you do use a credit card but you don't use your credit card excessively and spend more than what you would do if you were paying cash, that's another good safe sign that you're fine to have um, and use a credit card. And the third characteristic that I like to see um, indicating you know, you're safe using a credit card is you don't waste any time or effort thinking about your credit card. It's never an issue, it's never something that's in the back of your head that you worry about. Um, it's it's a, just a it's just another tool that you use that you pay off and um, and and you use it of value and you you find it helpful and you're not using it as a sort of emotional crutch to to cover some sort of um, issue that you've um, trying to or stress management that you're using and then the fourth um, char characteristic is you're using your um, credit card to add further value so credit cards I like to think of are a bit like carbs. If you use them wisely, um, they can actually um, give you lots of energy and um, help you sustain your day. So with your credit cards, you can link them to um, certain frequent flyer programs or rewards programs. And generally, I'm because I'm a, I'm a bit of a minimalist, I don't waste my time with um, reward programs. However, I do think some um, particular airlines have some fantastic credit card um, rewards programs and I know for myself um, when I use my credit cards I accumulate a lot of frequent flyer points which I am then able to use to help pay for airfares um, which saves me thousands of dollars and also I use those points to be able to upgrade um, you know to business class um, for flying internationally which again saves me you know thousands of dollars so Look, credit cards can be um, really helpful and really powerful in your um, financial situation, but they're a tool to be used very carefully and wisely and um, with great respect and discipline. Okay, so if you have those characteristics, um, that's a good sign. I'm really happy and relieved for you, and it means you can continue on using your credit cards safely. But definitely make sure that you have the right type of credit card that will work for your situation and give you the best value possible. So ciao for now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Hi, I'm AJ and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you're going to like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. So in my previous video, I talked about the Amazon Credit Builder card and I did a review of that card and talked about a little bit about what secure credit cards are. So in this video, I decided to talk about how to build credit and also how to rebuild your credit. So before I get into that, let's just first talk about the two main types of credit. You have revolving credit and you also have installment credit. So with revolving credit, it's basically an open ended, uh, no time limit credit usage. So we use the example of a credit card, which is a revolving uh, credit option. They give you a certain limit. Let's say it's a thousand dollars or it's ten thousand dollars. No matter what that limit is, there's no specific time limit 
on when you need to pay off a specific balance. So if you charge $500 on your $1,000 card and you pay it off, you can continuously do that for the rest of your life as long as you keep up with the payments and as long as that bank doesn't go out of business. So as I mentioned, a credit card is one example of revolving credit. You can also think of a, a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. So anytime you hear the word line of credit, that's a revolving credit. So it's a form of credit that you can use over and over again, as long as you make whatever the minimum payment is for that card based on the balance that you owe on that revolving credit line. The second type of credit that we're going to talk about is installment credit. So you can think of installment credit as you have a fixed timeline and a fixed amount of dollars that you're being allowed to borrow and you have to make those specific payments every month. And then at a certain period of time, whether it's a year, two years or five years, you are expected to pay off that loan. Now, this loan doesn't have to take the whole time period. You can actually pay it off early. Uh, with mo most of those types of credit, there is no penalty for paying it early. And depending on the type of loan or credit that you receive, there may not be a benefit as well. So you have to determine, is it a fixed interest rate to where you're already being charged that interest upfront, or if the interest is gonna be charged over time. And so that paying that line of credit off early would actually save you money over the long term. So typical types of installment loans are loans for cars, uh, mortgage loans, or any personal loan where you don't have a revolving ability to keep charging on that line of credit. So since this video is about building your credit and these same rules can apply if you're trying to repair your credit, what we're gonna talk about first is what's probably the easiest type of credit to receive, which is a credit card. And now if you, if you have bad credit or if you don't have any credit history, then you may have to start off with getting a secured credit card. Now with a secured credit card, what you're basically doing is you're gonna give a certain amount of dollars based on the limit that they allow for you. So let's say the credit card company is gonna give you a thousand dollar credit limit, but because you have no credit history, they don't wanna give you an unsecured credit limit to where there's no collateral for that company. They don't have a history to show that, you know, you're gonna make your payments on time. So they're gonna tell you, okay, you have to put down a deposit of a thousand dollars and we'll give you a thousand dollar credit limit. You can basically think of it like a savings account where you put that thousand dollars into this credit card company, they give you a credit card limit of a thousand dollars, and then you can continuously use that over time. And so the money that you're actually putting as that down as the deposit, you don't actually use that. So you still have to come up with the payments every month based on what you spend on that card. So of course, if you can get an unsecured card, by all means, that would be the best route to go. So that way the thousand dollars or however much your credit limit is, you can actually keep that money to yourself and put it in a savings account where you earn interest or put it into the stock market where it can get compound over time. But chances are, if you have absolutely no credit history or if you're rebuilding your credit because you had bad credit in the past, then a secured credit card would probably be the easiest route for you to build up your credit. Now, another route, which would be even easier, but this is also built on trust, is for someone to add you onto their credit card that they already have as an authorized user. So when you add someone as an authorized user, you're basically sharing that credit limit. So let's say your mom or dad, or maybe you have another family member that's willing to add you onto their credit card you are now both responsible for that credit limit. So if let's say it's your mom that added you to the card, if she doesn't pay the card, that's just like you not paying the card because now this is linked to your credit history. Now it's easier because you don't have to apply for it. The person that already has the card, they can just add you as a user. And there's, for most companies, there's no pull of the credit to make sure that this person is credit worthy or not. Some credit card companies may require that and maybe they may deny you or they may put a smaller limit on that credit card because they now have someone attached to it that they don't have the trust or the history of payments that they can give such a large limit. And I can attest to that. My actual first credit card, I was added on as an authorized user to my mom's credit card. And so instead of going out and applying for a card myself, I was quickly able to get onto a credit card and use that as I was going to college to buy my first computer. Now, as I mentioned, there could be a downside to this. You know, if they don't pay it, that will then affect your credit history. If you're charging stuff and then you don't make those payments, you can affect that person's credit as well. So of course you wanna get on a card of someone that you can trust 
and they also have to trust you because they're going to be adding you to their card and thus being connected your credit score is being connected to some degree. Now it's not a one-to-one. -one, so if that person has five other cards, they have mortgage loans and all types of other loans, you know, it won't drag their credit down if something were to happen and you were to not do your part in taking care of that credit card. But chances are they probably will take you off that card if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're paying your part and also that the person that you're joining, that they're doing their part to take care of that credit card. Now, the other option would be to get an installment credit. Now, getting an installment credit may be a little bit harder if you don't have any credit history at all. So I'll use an example of a credit union that I actually use to where you could get a secured loan, whereas you, know, you have money in your savings account, they basically create a loan for you, but you're depositing your funds as the actual collateral for that loan. And now you have a loan on your credit report that they are now reporting to show that you are a trustworthy user of credit. So of course, at the very least, you're gonna pay the minimum to make sure you keep that payment going for at least six to 12 months. That way you're building up your credit. And with this personal loan, personal loans are typically, the interest rates are typically lower than a credit card. Credit cards can range from anywhere between 14% or even up to 30% interest rate. Whereas most personal loans, they're usually below 20%. You can maybe even get one for as low as 2% or 5%. So as a person who's starting to build their credit or trying to rebuild their credit, secured credit cards and secured loans may be the best option for you if a bank or a credit card company isn't willing to provide you with an unsecured loan or an unsecured credit card. So now that you've been approved for your secured credit card or your secured loan or your unsecured credit card or unsecured loan, you, there are a few things that you want to focus on to get your credit score in the right place. So I'm not going to get into all of the factors of a credit score because there are many that you have to think about, but there are a few high impact areas that you should focus on to make sure that you build your credit and you or rebuild your credit the right way. So one of the main high impact areas of your credit score is your payment history. Now, credit card companies and whoever is maybe willing to give you a loan in the future, what they're gonna look at is the history of the payments that you made. Did you make payments on time? The fact of whether you pay the minimum or you pay more, that isn't as relevant as the fact of you being consistent and making payments over a long period of time. And with most secured credit cards, if you make payments for six months or more without missing any payments, Typically, they'll give you the deposit back that you made when you created that first secured credit card. And like I mentioned in the Amazon video, uh, their specific company, you have to make payments for at least seven months and then they'll automatically give you that deposit back. It could take longer depending on any other factors within your credit, but the minimum is seven months with Amazon. And I've seen that most companies are six months or more and then you can either you know, change to an unsecured card or they'll up your credit limit and we'll get into that next. So the second biggest factor is your credit utilization. So that means how much of your credit limit you're actually using compared to what your credit limit is. So if you have a limit of $1,000 and you keep a $500 balance, that means your credit utilization is at 50%. Typically you wanna keep it below 30% or even better below 10% or even better just pay it off every month. Because if you're paying it off every month, that means the credit card company is not charging you any interest and you're saving money. In order to make sure that you have a high credit score, you wanna at least keep it under a 10% utilization rate to make sure that you keep your credit score up. And now if you're starting off with that secured credit card, after six months, you can actually request to make a credit limit increase and you can actually do that every six months. And when you do that, you can either just request an increase without making a specific amount of money that you want your limit to go to. And usually they don't do a hard pull on your credit card, which would help to lower your credit score. But if you do need a specific amount, you can request that. And But they will have to do a hard pull, which will have a larger impact on your credit score than just a soft pull if just for requesting a credit increase. Now the importance of asking for that credit increase, I'll give the example of, again, if you have a thousand dollar limit and you have a $500 balance, that's a 50% utilization rate. Now, if you were to increase your limit to $2,000 and you have that same $500 balance, now that's only a 25% utilization rate. So the higher your credit limit, the higher amounts of money that you can have and, and still have a low utilization rate. 
Now the third high impact area would be derogatory marks. And so that those are things like uh, defaulting on a loan. If you've had a bankruptcy in the past, these are typically things that if you don't have any credit, those aren't things you have to worry about. Those things can only be created if you don't make your payments on time, if you go bankrupt. So you don't really have to worry about that section of the credit score. But those who are rebuilding their credit, those are people who have to worry about it because they've had bad credit in the past. They've had some negative remark on their credit. And so removing those derogatory marks are things that they need to focus on. So I'll make a video in the future to talk about how to remove those marks. Uh, today, we're just going to talk about getting started with building your credit. Now, the next area is a medium impact area. And this is the last area that we're going to talk about as far as building your credit. And we won't go too much into this because the main factor for this is the age of your credit. So the amount of years or months that you've had your credit card, this isn't something that you can change or make a difference in one day because it's over time. It's the amount of years. And typically to have a high score in this specific area, it takes about eight to 10 years to get to what the highest point for that specific section of your credit score. So if you're new, this is your first card or your first loan, the main thing you wanna remember is keep making those payments on time and do it over a long period of time. And this will take care of itself. So in this video, we talked about two of the different types of credit that you can have revolving an installment credit, as well as the high impact factors that affect your credit score. So if you're just getting started on your credit journey, uh, you may not be able to get that unsecured credit card. So you wanna apply for either secured credit card or secured loan so that you can get started with your own savings as the collateral for your credit line. And then make sure you focus on those high impact areas, which are to make sure you're paying on time, increasing your credit limit over time, and making sure you're keeping your credit utilization very low because that is a high impact area of your credit score. All right, thanks guys for watching this video. You could have been doing anything with your day, but you decided to watch this video and I really appreciate it. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. I am done with cash. What's up, Money Geeks? Mr. V here. Welcome to another video, guys. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about why I stopped using cash and debit card. Um, over the years, I've actually transitioned to never want to use cash or even my debit card. I don't even carry my debit card in my wallet um, anymore. So if you were to open my wallet, in my wallet, I got two credit cards. Uh, the green one is my business credit card and the gray one here is my personal credit card. And the reason why I stopped using um, a debit card, um, number one, is just a simple fact that um, the money in your, in your bank account comes directly out of your debit card. So if somebody was to steal my debit card and go use it somewhere, they are using that money directly out of my bank account and it's a hassle. Once that money is out of your bank account, um, when you, you when you go back to the banks to try to figure out if somebody stole your debit card, it's a bigger hassle. So I try to avoid that as at, at all costs. The reason why I don't use cash, as we all know, man, some people say cash is king, right? Cash is not really king to me anymore because um, once you pull cash out of your, your bank account and it's out here, this is nobody's money. I don't see your name or my name or anybody's name on this thing. So. If I were to drop it, it's gone. If somebody picked that money up, it's their money. There's no way I can kind of tie that money to me. There's no relationship between me and that money at that point. So um, when you move cash out of your bank account, it's out there in the world floating around. If you drop it, it's gone. Um, I know a lot of people talk about using the cash envelope system, right? Right here. So put money in there and use that to pay your bills. Um, it sounds really awesome, but if you look at the details and the nuances that comes with it, oh, I don't want to deal with it. So assume that you have your monthly expenses, like say $3,000, and you go to your bank and pull out $3,000, right? Um, you're hoping that when you get home, you're going to break it up into your little tiny envelopes and, and then spend them the way you need. And uh, you get out of the bank and for some reason, you drop that envelope 
it's gone. Three grand disappeared, like no trace. I don't want to be a victim of that, no way. And even still, if you don't drop it by yourself, what if somebody just, you know, rob you and just grab your bag and run away? Um, what are you gonna do? If they run away, turn the corner and take out their money and leave your bag there and you show up, that money is gone and there's no way you can go and say these are my dollar bills because it has my name. Dollar bills don't belong to anybody. They're free for anybody to hang on to. So, um, yeah, that's why I don't do the cash envelope system. I hate carrying cash around. And that's one reason why I don't carry my debit card because the money that gets pulled out of my debit card comes directly from my bank account and I hate it. And I hate losing money. So now let's talk about why I carry these two bad boys. Um, again, like I said, this is my business credit card and this is my personal credit card. So all our monthly expenses, our bills, everything. So starting from insurance to groceries to just name every little thing that we do in our house, we put them on our credit card. If a credit card can accept the payment, I'm putting it on the credit card. So first reason is because um, my personal credit card, I get a 1.5% cash back each time I spend a dollar on that credit card. Um, likewise, for my business um, credit card, I get 2% cash back each time I spend money on my business. So even by spending money when I buy materials or I buy um, stuff for, for my projects, um, again, I'm buying stuff to, for my project to get paid and I still get cash back. So um, it just makes sense. And then since I pay my balance in full every month, I'm just getting free money. And I know a lot of people use um, maybe there's some other credit cards that do points or airline mileage and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Spare me that. I don't want to have to do any conversion. My math is really bad. Just give me the dollar bills. That's it. So uh, that's why I prefer the direct cash back. The points and my air mileage and all that stuff uh, don't apply to me. Just give me the money and that's all we I care about. So um, again, like I said, my wife gets cash back on expenses that she does uh, just running the household. I get cash back running our business and, and, and just paying my bills, uh, my business bills every month, which is really, really awesome. So um, if you are one of the people that really believe in this system, um, it's totally cool. I, again, no knock on the people that believe in this. For me, I, I'm always looking for ways to, to improve my finances, looking for ways to bring in more as opposed to uh, giving out. I know it's like about, hey, when you have cash, you cannot spend beyond your means. But a credit card would encourage you to spend beyond your means. Um, and I push back on that and say, hey, we are disciplined enough. We know how much we have in our bank account. I'm not stupid to go and spend $10,000 knowing full way that I only have $2,000 in my bank account. I'm not that delusional. So if, if, if people are delusional enough to think that they can spend $100,000 on the credit card and they only have $10,000 in their bank account, well, you got bigger problems than the credit card itself because you're gonna blame the credit card, but I don't think the credit card is the issue. At that point, the issue is you because your math is whacked. Like you need to go and double check your math. Um, go talk to your math teacher because you're not, doing, you're not thinking the right way. So. Um, uh, just to, to put things into perspective, again, I use um, uh, a credit card 99% of the time, given the opportunity. Um, I don't carry my credit, my debit card with me in my wallet. I don't carry cash. Like I said, this I don't carry this around. And for obvious reason, the cash that I carry around doesn't have my name inscribed on it. If I drop it, lose it, it's gone. Nobody is obligated to pick that money and come give it to me. Um, like, likewise, if I should you know, drop my debit card and somebody uses my debit card, that money is gone. It doesn't come back to me. So um, based on that, I don't want to carry cash around and I don't want to carry a debit card. So question of the day, why don't you use a credit card for your everyday payments? Let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, go ahead and give that thumbs up. If you find it useful, share it with one friend. And if you think what we're doing here is awesome, hey, how about you hit that subscribe button? And as always, stay motivated.